Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little bit about yield maps. You might be wondering, well, what is this exactly? That's what we wanted to explain and how that helps farmers. As farmers combine or harvest their field, most combines now are equipped with yield mapping technology. So as they're driving that combine through the field, they can watch how their yield varies as they go up and down hills or across different soil types. And at the end of the season then, the farmer can print out yield maps so he can look at a field and see which areas were higher yielding and which areas need some work. This particular field, we've been farming really since we were kids and you look around at the terrain and you say well man you got hills you got valleys there's different soil types out there you can just see it in the soil color and you wonder how can this possibly yield exactly the same across the field it doesn't it really goes up and down we'll see easily 50 bushel swings or more when we harvest corn off this field. Yeah, but wait, whoa, 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 wait a second. So this is the whole thing, and this is what traps a lot of farmers right there when Darren starts talking like that, that, well, there's nothing much we can do. We got hills, we got valleys, we got different soil I types. I didn't say there's and nothing I we can do. And I completely disagree with that. I, I and, didn't and say so there's nothing we can do. Yep. I just said there's variance yep, through the but, field. But here's the whole thing. What farmers do with these yield maps is they look at the yield map at the end of the year and realize, yes, I've got a 50 bushel yield gap there. Why? That's the whole question. So then we go to those specific areas, the good areas and the bad areas. We soil sample them separately. We evaluate them separately. We do field inspections separately. We try to figure out why do we have a problem? Like in this field, the problem in a lot of cases was lack of drainage. So we put drain tile in. Well, that really evened a lot of things up. The problem on a lot of hilltops is for years they'd gotten eroded, so we'd lost topsoil. So what do we do? We build new topsoil through using manure, using high residue crops, using bio biological products and reducing tillage. We go out and figure out where we have weed problems, insect problems, disease problems, all these different things. That's the purpose of the yield map. It's not just to have some nice colored map at the end of the year showing, well, here was 250 bushel area, here's a 200 bushel area, here's a 150 bushel area. You know, that's, that's what the map shows you, but what the farmer has to do is figure out the question, why? Well, what it really allows a farmer to do is have kind of a guideline of how to manage his field on a smaller basis or manage his whole farm on a smaller basis. A few years back, we had a chance to go over to the Ukraine and the average farm size there was 25,000 acres and guys wanted to manage every single acre of ground exactly the same. Right. Put the same amount of fertility on, the same amount of seed, the entire package just exactly the same. What we're doing is completely the opposite. We want to manage down to just small little areas of the field and figure out, all right, well, this part yielded much less what can I do differently to make that yield more? Or the other side of it is this spot in the field really yielded well. What am I doing right over here that I could replicate in other parts of the field? And it's just been such a great learning tool. For me, you know, there have been a lot of technological advances over the last couple of decades on farms. And one of the biggest ones was just this yield mapping technology so we could map these fields out. I think farmers became aware of how big these differences were out in the field more than ever before. And to Darren's point, not in this field, but in some other fields we have, we literally have good heavy ground to pure sand back to good heavy ground as you go across the field. Well, there's no fix to pure sand unless you're going to tear out the sand and put in good heavy clay and black dirt. And obviously a farmer can't afford to do that on hundreds of acres. So what we do in those cases is we use the yield map to vary the planting population because I want to plant 35,000 plants on a per acre basis in corn in the good areas and I want to plant 20 or 22,000 plants per acre in that pure sand. I want to vary that a lot and I also want to reduce the amount of fertilizer I'm putting in those very sandy areas. I'm using my yield map in conjunction with these other maps to set a variable variety, variable rate planting map, to also do variable fertilizer maps. And when we think about fertilizer, just think about that like plant food. And if we've got an area like, for example, we've had a couple of years of drought on our farm in a row where we literally yielded nothing. We didn't get any corn production at all in those sandy spots in the field. So we put all the plant food that we needed out there to grow a crop, yet we didn't use any of it up. So when we're doing this variable rate fertilizer or plant food application, we know in those areas of the field, and we verify it by soil testing, we've got all the food we need there already 
for a successful crop. So we won't put any more on in those areas. Well, once again, in summary, this yield map is just a compilation of all the yield monitor data that the combine gets as it goes across an entire field. And once that field is done, we can print out this nice map showing us different colors and each color represents a yield level that we were at in that particular area in the field. Well, one thing that a yield monitor can also show us is areas of the field where we had weed problems. If our weed of the week was one of those tough weeds, it can really cost a farmer some yield. Can you identify this week's weed? 